Although I have a custom knife holder, most of the time I like to run my molding knives in a planer head and I actually just have a separate planer head because I'd rather not take the knives out of this planer head every time I get ready to run moldings. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and remove this planer head and put it aside in a safe place and put it in another planer head that I can actually set molding knives up in. One of the advantages for me of running molding knives in the planer head is that I can run knives that are wider than would work in the custom knife holder and also sometimes I'll have two or three different profiles set up and as long as I put each profile in a different slot of the planer head I can leave those three profiles or maybe even four profiles set up and not have to be changing things back and forth when I get ready to run a different molding I just go and adjust the height for that molding and I'm ready to run molding without having to change things back and forth and again sometimes I run very large knives. I've got a knife that you'll see later that I make reeded columns out of that's probably eight or nine inches wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is slide our block of wood in here. And again, I put my gloves on. We made sure the machine's turned off. And I'm going to just keep going, raising the bed up until it starts to make. And I'll know. There we go. All right, start to make a little bit of contact. I'll probably back it off just a little bit and I'm going to bump the uh, belts off. Almost got my finger. I was thinking I probably would before the day's over with. Okay, now we're going to raise this back up so it's barely touching. And it's always important to take the locking collars off before you start backing these Morse taper shafts out or else you'll be basically trying to spread your planer. Okay, this one's a little bit tight, so what I'm going to have to do is take a hammer and a nail set and just barely hit it when there's actually a little spot set up. There's actually a little spot here set up for that. That popped it loose. It took just a little bit. Sometimes that happens. Let's see whether this one on this end is going to need it or not. That one's a little bit looser. So I just backed it up. Get my block of wood back underneath here. This one's loose now. And again, I'm gonna wanna go towards, and I make, now I'm gonna raise that up to where it puts maybe a little bit of pressure on the head. And I wanna go towards the switch to loosen. And that just starts to back this taper up. I'm setting a back relief knife here. Casing trims always have a little bit of relief in the back and what that is for, when you put a piece of trim up on the wall, you want it to make contact with the sheetrock on one side and the door jam on the other. And by relieving some material out of the back, you help make sure that that happens. Now, when you're setting a knife in the planer head, you get a knife. This one is just a straight cutter because it's making the back relief. But you still get one knife that's going to cut and you'll have an aluminum gib that goes with it and you tighten it down and as you tighten the gib down it raises up and locks the knife in place and then you have these balancers this steel gib and this piece of steel bar weigh the same or they're set up to balance the weight of this knife and uh, woodmaster does that for you, you as long as when you order your knife, you tell them whether you're going to be running it in the custom knife holder or in the planer head, they'll take care of everything else for you and make it really, really easy. One of the other things that uh, Woodmaster does that really, really makes my job easy is if I need any kind of a special knife, all I have to do is send them a little piece of the molding that I want to reproduce or match, and they'll grind the knife for me and send it out balanced. And if I have something that I'm wanting to create myself, if I can draw the picture of the profile that I want cut and then put an indexing mark that shows how wide it is, they can actually create a custom knife just from my drawing. Again, though, you have to draw out the profile you want and then give them a measurement of how wide that it's going to be. And they'll grind a knife pretty well anything that you want just from that and send it to you balanced either 
to go on the planer head or if it's a smaller knife to where you could put in your custom knife holder. Okay, the molding that we're going to be making today is for a job that I've got going where most of the molding in the house, the folks used MDF molding. And if you're going to paint, there's nothing wrong with MDF molding uh, and it can save some money. But in one room of the house, they want it to stain. It's a study. It's going to be a really, really nice room. So they want a stain grade molding to match the MDF. Well, before I got a Woodmaster, I could never do that. I'd have to maybe get some other molding company to make a special run for me. And that is one of the greatest benefits of the Woodmaster is the ability to make special runs and, and say runs of even down to 50 or 60 feet economically because as you can see, it doesn't take very long to set it up to run. I've paid big molding companies up to $250 just to set up to run a piece of molding because they're big machines. It takes a lot of work to set those up. The Woodmaster, it really doesn't take that much at all to get it set up. And so it's really an advantage when you're doing custom things where you're not running a thousand feet or so. What we're going to do is set up so that we can at the same time be putting the back relief in one piece while we're putting the profile on the other. Now I'm probably going to have to put a shim under one of these two pieces because the profiles are not going to cut at the same depth and I'll show you how that works in a minute. But we put two pieces in here and then put the guide boards over against them. Now to set this knife in place and what we're going to be getting ready to do is duplicate. Here's the MDF molding that we're going to want to create a stain grade piece to match. So what I'll do now is pull this board back out and when you're setting these guide boards up, you don't want them so tight that they're pinching the board in place, but they shouldn't be able to move back and forth to the side. Either. There ought to be to where when you pull it out, you get a little bit of drag, but there's no play side to side. If there's play side to side, you're not going to get a clean cut in your profile. Okay. I'm going to put this board aside and now I'll come back and we'll set up that knife. The one thing that I mentioned earlier is you don't want to put your profiling knife, if you're doing more than one setup, in the same slot of the planer head. So I've got a knife, profiling knife here, so I'm going to go to here and I'll put this knife in. Yeah, I've got an aluminum gib that matches it. Okay, now, as it turns out, I got the piece of molding in backwards. So I have to pull it out. As you can see, that's going to, that profile is going to match up. So I'll put it back in there. And I'm going to go ahead and bring the table up a little bit better so I can see how that profile is going to match up. And if I didn't have a piece of molding to start with, what I would do is I would go ahead and put the board in here and I just have to slide this over and I just have to center it to where I thought the profile looked like it was going to be right on the board. But since I've got a piece of molding to match, I can eyeball right down that and see that that is exactly where it needs to set up. I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up. Snug both sides and then I'm really going to crank it in there. Double check one more time. Looks like that's going to line up just like I want it to. So I'll pull this piece. Actually, the other thing that I can do now, I'm going to set my two balancers in here. And then the last thing that I'll do is I'll actually try and crank this down so that I can set the depth of my knife cut using this piece of profile also. That way it's going to be exactly the same as the sample piece that I had to match. We'll back it up just a little bit and that should be exactly the same depth as the piece that we have as a sample.